Lots of video game adaptations allow us to step into the shoes of our childhood heroes, but there comes a time when we must put away childish things and move on to adult things. And by that, I mean the video game adaptations of the movies you had posters of in your college dorm. Most of these stories are about broken, destructive, selfish men who chase a dream at the expense of everyone that cares for them. In the film's final moments, you'll see everything they've built come crashing down in a karmic implosion. But until then, it's a heck of a ride. These movies are special. These were your first foray into prestige dramas, and you didn't just see them, you made them part of your identity. You bought the posters. And when your favorite video game publishers saw them poster sales, they knew it was time to work their video game magic. The Godfather came out in 1972, and it wasn't long before people started calling it one of the best movies ever made. Francis Ford Coppola created this vision of the criminal underworld that was dangerous, but still classy, like an Aperol spritz served in a recalled lead-painted Garfield mug. While it told the story of a man's loss of humanity in pursuit of power, it also created a secret, magical world of tradition and intrigue hidden within our own, a sort of Italian crime Hogwarts. So naturally, people said, let me in, which is why video games designers gave it the time and attention it deserved, not releasing the game for 34 years. The Godfather, on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, faithfully follows the plot of the first Godfather film, but with the addition of a self-insert fanfic character who gumps his way through the most memorable story beats. They brought back some of the original actors to reprise their roles, so you can show up, watch the important people have a conversation, and occasionally pipe in with something inane when they look at you. Just like real life. Remember the shock of seeing the horse head in the bed? What if you got to stand by and fight the stable guards while Rocco carved that tasty bit of horse meat off the bone, then babysit him through an excruciating stealth mission as he got it to the bed? Remember the gun that Michael finds in the toilet and then uses to kill McCluskey and Solozo? you get to put that toilet gun in the toilet. Remember the film's emotional climax where Michael orders a series of merciless hits that establish him as a feared and powerful underworld boss while creating an irreparable rift with his family? You get to do that. You're helping. The whole thing is designed so that the next time you watch The Godfather, you can just keep pointing at the screen and saying, that was me, I did that. Each of these experiences fleshes out and enhances the overall experience of the film. As series director Francis Ford Coppola puts it, I had absolutely nothing to do with the game, and I disapprove. I think it's a misuse of the film. Okay, Francis, thank you for sharing your opinion, but have you considered that maybe you're not the target audience? The game lets you wear cool hats and suits and drive fancy cars and shoot a Tommy gun. Sure, it doesn't reflect the themes of the film, but it does reflect the themes of the poster. A cool guy in a tuxedo saying tough guy lines with no repercussions. Anyways, the Godfather game gets 10 indifferent James Cons out of 10. Never mind, send somebody would. Reservoir Dogs is a non-linear masterpiece about a botched bank robbery that slowly reveals a violent jigsaw puzzle with half the pieces missing. But the, the poster is a lot less confusing. The video game follows the film closely, but fills out a lot of those very intentional gaps. What happens in the gaps? A lot of driving, cussing, and because it was 2006, slow motion shooting. The only one of the original actors Eidos could land was Michael Madsen. So the role of Steve Buscemi's Mr. Pink is reprised by Wheatus Kren. But the developers didn't just phone it in. Sure, the game is a kind of janky third-person shooter paired with a kind of janky driving game, but they created this interesting crowd control mechanic that allows you to mitigate unnecessary bloodshed with careful management of hostages. Or you could just go hog wild. That's kind of neat, I guess, but it wasn't enough to earn the game positive reviews. Its scores were stuck in the middle. That's a Steeler's Wheel reference. The game definitely has all the knucklehead stuff that inspired you to buy the poster in the first place. It's got the cool suits, the cussing, the 70s radio hits, and the Mexican standoffs, the blood splatter. It's just trying so hard to give you everything you want. An iconic scene in the film is where Michael Madsen cuts that cop's ear off. So they just make that his whole thing. Like you can just go around doing it whenever you want. It's like if they made a Star Wars game where you played as Darth Vader and you could just like tell anybody that you're their father. Unlike The Godfather, this film doesn't have a real moral center. It gets by on its unusual structure and a collection of genuinely memorable moments and lots and lots of style. 
style that the developers of the game were slavishly dedicated to reproducing. In the case of Reservoir Dogs, that style is the legacy. I give Reservoir Dogs a 10 out of 10. And I do leave a tip. The Sopranos is a crime drama and a family drama. Tony Soprano tries to maintain control of his mafia family and his family family and his own deteriorating mental health as his problems pile up and the noose slowly tightens. He orders hits, he yells at his kids, he goes to therapy. The show goes great lengths to create this cast of characters who are profoundly broken, sad, and sometimes monstrous. The game is about just hanging out with them, just being their buds. And folks, the game is bad. People yell at you, you hit the punch button, you talk to your ghost dad, rinse, repeat. You, yeah, you have a ghost dad. Why? Because in three frames of the show, Tony sees an image of a friend whose death he harbors a lot of guilt about. It's a metaphorical moment. But the game asks, what if it were literal and there were ghosts? From the ground up, the game is about letting you hang out with these murderous assholes in screen-accurate recreations of the show's iconic locations. Why would a game company think anyone would want a simulation of getting cussed at by a bunch of deeply damaged Italian men in a hot deli? Because people want that. Cheeseburger and a vanilla shake. If it's chocolate, you're fucking taking it back, got it? When you go to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you know you're still gonna snap a selfie with genocidal dad murderer Kylo Ren, cause he's got a thick torso and a cool cape. Nothing that happened in The Sopranos could make us hate Tony enough to stop watching, or take the poster off our wall. The Sopranos, Road to Respect, gets 10 ghost dads out of 10. Hey Joey, I'm happy for you son. In fact, I'm proud as a fuck. Before we move on to the next Knucklehead movie adaptation, we need to pour one out for the adaptation that never happened. The one that got away. Most of these games are a good degree dumber than their source material, but in this case, not a single developer could figure out how to make that happen. So the Boondock Saints game was never released. The Boondock Saints is like the film adaptation of the video game adaptation of a Quentin Tarantino movie, and it could have kept that cycle going forever by having its own game. But the only existing evidence of the game's public debut is a video posted by YouTube user Griffin McElroy. The teaser begins with remarks from director Troy Duffy. I wish I could be there with you at South by Southwest. I went there last year, it was awesome. Got totally drunk. <laughs> We're then treated to some tasteful bagpipe music and a fly through of a completely normal Boston back alley before the title reveal. Unfortunately, the game never surfaced and I won't be able to give it a proper review. So this audience member's commentary will have to suffice. The Fight Club began as a dark novel about masculine self-destruction, and David Fincher's film adaptation added mind-bending effects that challenged the viewer's perception of reality. The poster was a bar of soap, and the game was total shit. In the film, the fights don't matter. It's about struggle, it's about the feeling of hurting and getting hurt and feeling anything at all. There's not a single fight in the film where one person's martial abilities determines the course of the plot. Vivendi Universal took five years to meditate on the themes of the film, and then produced their adaptation. A busted ass Tekken game where every single character is just a different puffy headed white guy in bootcut jeans. And that includes Limp Bizkit frontman Fred Durst. Nobody's sure why. Most reviews point to the irony of Vivendi squirting out a cash-grabby tie-in game to Fight Club, given its veneer of anti-consumerism. They also pointed out that the game fucking sucked. The game's 12 characters share three identical movesets. They got the likeness rights to Meatloaf and nobody else, and all of the fights are weirdly quiet, like toxic masculinity ASMR. It also had a really embarrassing story mode, and I could try to put its whole vibe into words, but I'm just gonna show you this clip instead. Irvin told me to come. I'm looking for Tyler Durden. Check inside. Fuck off, pretty boy. Even if I did know where he was, I couldn't tell you. Then give him this message for me. Fuck you. I can remember that. And fuck you too, pretty boy. What are you looking at? I'm looking for Tyler Durden. 
I give Fight Club 10 quiet punches out of 10. Scarface is the story of a Cuban refugee who starts out poor, hustles his way through the Miami underworld, and briefly experiences wealth and power, only to become hated by his own family and shot 1,000 times in front of his own ironically titled statue. But the poster is much more black and white like the game Inspired. Out of all the games on this list, Scarface The World Is Yours is probably the most competent. It's a GTA clone where you play as Tony Montana. You drive, you shoot, you build up a cocaine empire. Lots of games are already structured around the gradual accumulation of wealth, power, and toys. So the plot of Scarface, up until Tony's violent death, can be grafted seamlessly onto a video game. And about that untimely death. Scarface's handling of the source material is outstanding. The game completely disregards the author's intent or a learned reading of the film and looks at what it actually represents to the people who bought the poster, and then it just rewrites the plot to match. Tony Montana survives. Dave McKenna, the Hollywood screenwriter who helped pen the game's story, originally wanted it to start with Tony gunning down a room full of movie execs for insisting that the bad guy has to die at the end. From that historical divergence point, it's just pure knucklehead fantasy. You're driving fast cars and listening to 80s radio hits and buying speedboats. There is a completely superfluous text scroll on the screen of the last body parts you've shot. You have a balls meter. And when you have maximum balls, you can go Super Saiyan. Scarface the film is yet another story about a dude trading his soul for wealth and power, becoming loathed by his family, and dying badly. But people still idolize Tony Montana. You've got that Scarface poster because he went from nothing to something, and he looks good in a suit. I give Scarface the world is yours maximum balls. This is a phenomenon we see over and over again in games and entertainment. It's the anti-hero we're supposed to pity who we end up idolizing. Maybe it's because we've been given a culture that valorizes violence and acquisition. Maybe the problem is that cautionary tales about dangerous men just don't work. Why would stories about the dangers of wealth and power resonate with normal people who will never have the luxury of experiencing the dangers of wealth and power? Just about every one of these stories failed to convince us that our hero was broken, sad, and cruel. But every one of these games succeeded in giving us exactly what we want. A playable version of the poster. 